most of you will know um courtesy of my you know my flipping title of the podcast and obviously the news across social media joe rogan has ended up re-signing with spotify um it's really interesting because a few people myself included were wondering what he was going to do because his deal was coming up the original deal that he signed with spotify if i'm not mistaken was like 200 million um you know just before the pandemic or just in the pandemic times it was an exclusivity deal but he also got to basically keep his ip intellectual property which meant after the term was over he could essentially go and shop his podcast around the original deal was a podcast podcast exclusive deal um when they signed rogan i'm pretty sure they'd also launch um spotify video um with the podcast so you can obviously watch it that way and if you pay if you had a paid for subscription you could watch it in the background which is pretty cool um but it was obviously only exclusive to spotify only so there was no more youtube live streaming there was no more full shows on the youtube only clips um there was who else there was no more apple podcasts um syncing and stuff and i think for a lot of people myself included even though i'm a big rogan fan and rogan was one of the main reasons why i started podcasting myself um rogan uh, definitely why i started podcasting i'd say bill burr is probably why i started doing it on my own solo because i love bill burr's solo podcast right the monday morning after tuesday flipping podcast is flipping amazing um so big up bill burr and even though I love Rogan, even I have to admit, being a serial Rogan listener, ever since he signed to Spotify, I don't listen to the show as much because I don't open my spot. Even though, again, I pay for a Spotify. I got like a monthly subscription. I pay for a premium account, um, but I never open it. I'm always using Apple Music. I always use Overcast as my main podcast player or, or the Apple podcast app on my iPhone, but I very rarely open Spotify. Sometimes if I want to watch a, you know, a particular episode, I'll watch it, but it's not like at the front of mind anymore. It's kind of out of sight, out of mind. So this is a great deal. This new deal is a great flipping deal because from what I'm reading correctly, it allows him to put the shows up on YouTube. Now, I don't know if that means it's going to be on his own YouTube account under his, uh, or if Spotify are going to create a separate Joe Rogan Spotify YouTube channel and then have all the live shows. So I didn't have all the podcast episodes on there because that would probably make more more sense. Isn't it? If you're going to give him loads of money, you might as well, you know, keep some of that ad revenue from AdSense on that side of things because the views on flipping YouTube, even before he signed, were crazy. Right? He was getting high millions of views and you imagine even now it probably get more. Um, this is amazing news because it also proves that Rogan is definitely a big deal. I think a lot of people were kind of speculating, myself included. Um, do the numbers really make sense? But considering that Spotify has let go of a bunch of people, considering Spotify has not re-signed a bunch of podcasts, but they're looking like they're honing in on the ones that are actually, you know, bringing the most ROI, return on investment. It seems like, from my understanding, Rogan's numbers behind the scenes must be really good. Rogan's numbers behind that cloak, right? Because Spotify don't like to reveal the analytics. It's basically their one bargaining chip and, you know, negotiation tactic they have. Um, same with Netflix and whatever. But I'm pretty sure that if spotify are willing to offer joe rogan or willing to give him 250 million most likely the numbers are really good especially when they think when they're kind of prospecting out the ads they're going to get off the back of it and shit so clearly rogan is doing something good there but always do, do something well there because you don't really get these kind of deals if the numbers don't make sense on their end so congrats to rogan on that regard let's read the article courtesy of wall street journal who broke the story exclusively Joe Rogan gets a new Spotify deal worth up to $250 million. Hit show to be distributed broadly, including on YouTube rather than exclusively on audio streaming services. So let's read the entire article here. Um, Spotify has reached a new deal with star podcaster Joe Rogan that will allow his hit show to be distributed broadly. Rogan's fresh deal estimated to be worth as $250 million over the multi-year term, according to people familiar with the matter, involves an upfront minimum guarantee I wonder what that guarantee is. I wonder what that minimum guarantee is. 250 M's. What do you think his minimum guarantee is? I'm going to say like 100 mil. I'm going to say the minimum guarantee is like 100 mil. <laughs> just straight up as a guarantee. Just to hold you down. Fucking hell. Plus a revenue sharing agreement based on ad sales. So 
great so there under the new licensing agreement spotify will sell ads for and distribute the joe rogan experience across several podcast platforms including a new video format on again, a video format on youtube the company said on friday under his previous deal the show was exclusive to spotify so yeah this sounds like they're probably going to have a, a a separate a separate you know, I think that they're going to have a separate kind of Spotify, Joe Rogan Spotify kind of channel. Maybe, I don't know. Or maybe they'll just put the AdSense under Spotify. I don't really know. But let's see what happens. Under the new licensing agreement, um, sorry, Joe Rogan Experience has released more than 2,200 episodes. Cool conversations are kind of mental nourishment, Rogan said in the Spotify blog post. Um, encourages people to have smaller conversations with their friends and it just generally makes more life more interesting. Spotify shares raised 2% on Friday. The new deal is, the, is emblematic of the shifting economics and podcasting, which has matured in both audiences and reach and advertising spend since Rogan's first deal. Spotify is working to revise the terms of its deals with top talent so that the shows are distributed on several platforms to maximize their audience and ad sales rather than requiring exclusivity. That's a very interesting um, approach, isn't it? The whole reason why Spotify were doing the exclusive deals was for user acquisition. So I'm assuming now Spotify have realized that they've kind of topped, they've kind of um, topped, you know, they've topped out, right? They, they, there's only so many new people that are going to sign up to Spotify exclusively to sign to listen to a podcast. So you're better off just signing talent on your platform or signing talent under your flipping umbrella and then allowing them to be distributed across all the major networks or platforms, or whatever, so that you can bring eyes back onto you or just make money on the ads, basically. So, you know, so essentially Spotify are turning into a distributor themselves, really, if you think about it, right? Um, it continues. It's also aiming to pay smaller minimum guarantees and emphasize revenue sharing, a model that helps share risk with talent. Huh. So maybe he does get a minimum, again, minimum could be like 10 mil to 100 mil, but still the rest of it will probably be tied up in ad sales. But considering how much money Rogan makes on ads and considering the, the blockbuster ads he gets, he probably will get that full 250 50 mil anyway, and maybe more. If anything, it incentivizes him to actually do a better job. Maybe there is no cap. That's a crazy thing. <laughs> maybe there's no cap. Maybe it's 250 million, like, you know, as a minimum, but there's actually no cap as to what he can make <laughs> fucking hell spotify struck the first deal with rogan in 2020 during its initial blitz in the medium it agreed to pay more than 100 million to bring um rogan experience on spotify exclusively in a bit to jumpstart the podcast listening platform the show has remained far and away the most popular podcast on spotify the show has remained far and away the most popular show on spotify again proof that you know, when you're doing the right thing, you're doing the right thing. Rogan's previous deal with Spotify ties his payout and estimated um, to land around 180 to 200 million by the end of the year. This term to audience number targets. God damn. Rogan's going to be worth half a billion just from fucking podcasting. Forget all these other business ventures on it and anything else he's probably involved with in the shadows. He's going to be worth half a billion just from sitting in front of a Sennheiser microphone incredible spotify spent um heavily on podcasting in the formats early days to build a large audiences while that early foray in the podcast improved costly spotify surpassed apple to become the most popular podcast and listening platform really i did not know that to be fair i've always wondered why apple have never really invested into the podcasting field or genre in general i wonder why they've never done it maybe there's just not enough money in it or maybe it just requires too much effort they have their app obviously they have their obviously platform, whatever. Um, you obviously distribute your stuff from on Apple Podcasts, but they've never really invested any big money in signing anybody exclusively. They've kind of left that to everybody else. Huh. Now the company is working to become more disciplined in its podcast spending by distributing Rogan Show broadly. Spotify stands to make more money from ads it sells on podcasts, reaches larger audiences because they realize they can't make any more money on fucking people signing up. There's only there's not going to get they're not going to get a they're not going to suddenly find 200 plus million people to sign up to spotify it's not going to happen um they can only raise prices to a certain amount so they have to make money other ways and another way to make money is obviously ads um spotify's deal with rogan 
um, landed in hot water in 2022 when Rocker Neil new young boy's music due to what he said of vaccine misinformation the company stood by rogan with chief executive daniel x saying largest audio platform in the world involves embracing diverse voices and offering opinions the company chase scale in podcasting now my initial thoughts my initial thoughts is that i feel like rogan is worth every single penny of that 250 million if not more i think it's a nice thing to see somebody who's like the leader the kind of you know the number one person getting the big deals it doesn't always happen especially like when you're an originator quote-unquote type person in that kind of long-form podcast format that he's always done um it's nice to see somebody that's been doing it for so long actually get their just rewards and actually get a deal that is reflective of the impact and the and the scale of which people listen to his podcast i was listening to how long gone the other day and um one of the hosts i think it was jason said something about um because i think some one of the guests on how long gone podcast which i love to listen to the the guest basically says something along the lines of oh you guys get a lot of press um about how you're so popular and stuff but not but no one can understand why and i've always understood this and i've always thought the same thing and a lot of people on the how long gone reddit think the same thing too right a lot of the press they get is a little bit weird right it's just it feels like it's kind of like payola but Jason made a really good point in that he said that he thinks when people listen to podcasts, they want to be, they want to feel like they're being, they, they want to feel like they are being somewhat intellect, intelligent. They want to feel like, yeah, they, they want to feel like they're smart, but they also don't want to let people know they listen to podcasts. So it's also kind of a little bit like you kind of, you know, you're kind of a bit of ashamed about listening to shows. So no one really is upfront or is honest about what they listen to. So I think the same thing applies to Rogan. I think, there are people out there like myself who are unabashed, unashamed Rogan fans, but I think there's a broad set of people out there that don't, you know, talk about how much they listen to Rogan, but they clearly do because the numbers speak for themselves. And it's good to see that sort of stuff get rewarded. Um, I also think, especially in light of all of these comedians who are like investing in crazy amounts in like ridiculous studios trying to fucking you know build out all these different shows and shit and do networks i think it's a really sobering reminder that at the end of the day if your shows are good and you're somewhat interesting and you have good guests you have good conversations you will get rewarded all of those bells and whistles all of those crazy shows sketch comedy things you're doing behind the paywall um all these nonsense and having a million people work behind your staff is a waste of money rogan does the joe rogan experience essentially with jamie um i think there's you know a couple flipping killer navy seals guys around the fucking complex that he records his shows and i've heard there's some booker dude involved right basically five people in that facility that are basically working with the podcast but in the actual room itself there's only two people that work on that show um minus the guest two people two people J rogan the host and young jamie behind the boards and he controls all the mic levels and the camera switching it's not even like on t5k where they have a separate person doing the fucking mic switches or someone watching the levels he does everything right so i think this is a good reminder for a lot of those flipping guys out there um, especially in the comedy world who are just doing way too much with their podcast that at the end of the day if your show is good people are gonna you know respond to it well and you'll get rewarded but it is about putting on a good show and i think despite rogan changing over the years i think it's you have to be honest even the guys that don't like him the show's been entirely success it's been insanely consistent let's be honest it's been so consistent over the years so steady so steady it's fallen off a little bit sometimes but not fallen off to a point where you're flipping deleting it or you're unsubscribing it or whatever it's just remained steady and now that it's coming back onto youtube i feel like it's going to be a game changer especially the comments people really underestimate how much of a great community there was around the joe rogan experience comments I feel like the comments on the episodes were sometimes even better than the shows. I don't know if you guys agree with me or not, but you sometimes learn quite a bit from the comments, people kind of going back and forth and shit, recommending other videos to watch and shit. The comment section on Rogan's flipping YouTube was banging. So I'm hoping, even if they don't have the live chat enabled during the live stream, because that could be a bit dicey, um, especially with all the different political opinions and politically United States being where it is at the moment, I think it's important that they leave the comments open and leave them like a free for all like the rogan experience was i really 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 do hope that's the case because if that's the case i think it's going to be great to see that going forward um and obviously i really do like this idea that spotify are doing where they're signing 
podcast and they're saying hey we're going to sign you but then we're going to have you distributed on all platforms so that we can get the maximum amount of listeners but then also we can maximize our ads and um, which is pretty cool to see going forward now i'm wondering what's this 250 million going to do to rogan some people said that 200 million he initially got from rogan I think some people hypothesized it was nearly 300. Some people were saying that that 300 million changed Rogan. I don't think it did personally. I think COVID broke Rogan's brain, which is understandable. I think COVID broke a lot of our brains. I think it might have broke my brain temporarily, being locked in at indoors and shit was horrible. But I think if you're somebody at Rogan and you had you had money and you have wealth and you have means and you're still not able to do what you want, like the thing that you love and enjoy, like recording shows and doing stand up, it can really break your brain, especially when you're getting all this misinformation from mainstream media, blah blah blah. So I think COVID really did break Rogan's brain more so than to the two hundred million. But I also think people miss this part of it i think also moving to austin i think moving to austin definitely changed rogan um especially at the stage of his life he's at right in terms of you know he's what um early 50s um he's making loads of money he you know they always say whenever you start to make loads more money you end up kind of leaning more to the conservative side because you want to quote unquote conserve your money um whatever it may be and obviously those type of things are mostly going to be lent to the right side of politics so i think those things change rogan more than the money i think one thing you have to give the guy credit he's not for somebody who has a lot of money he doesn't speak about money you know for somebody who has a lot of cash he doesn't really speak about it if anything he does those of fun things you know he kind of does what he wants essentially um he opens a fucking comedy club and it, by all accounts um the comedy mothership people have said um on podcasts and stuff he pays crazily well probably too well but he can afford to because he's got so much money to burn literally he's not going to be able to spend all the money he's making so he's kind of like giving back to comedy in a way with opening up this club it's basically like a charity but he also gets to kind of put on these fun shows so um if if anything i don't think money really changes him that much really if anything um i think it's just him getting older um him moving to another state where you know people's political opinions are a bit different than what he was kind of used to listening to in la um, and his perspective on the world changing after covid so i think people that are scared about him changing with the money it's not going to be that if anything the longer he lives in austin <laughs> the more he's going to probably change maybe for the worse but i still think going forward I think the best is yet to come. I think things are going to keep evolving and changing, whatever, maybe with Jorgen. And I think the best is yet to come. And I think, again, um, considering all the shit shows around there at the moment, all the shit bits of entertainment, I still enjoy listening to Rogan. And I think now it's back on YouTube. Let's be honest, guys. Loads of you watch me on YouTube. I'm sure most of you don't even check out my fucking podcast on fucking apple and all the audio platforms audio is definitely not king i get most of my views and listens definitely from youtube so i'm sure a lot of you guys will probably end up listening or checking out the odd clip and that of rogan because it's available on youtube one of the biggest platforms to check out some of that content so i'm sure it's definitely going to do good things for him going forward that's a smile of somebody i just that just got the wire <laughs> that's the smile of somebody that just got confirmation that the wire hit right that minimum guarantee wire just hit that's a smile of somebody <laughs> who knows he's gonna have as much buffalo trace as he wants he's gonna have as much buffalo trace as he wants now <laughs> that money just hit anyway this is close to your spotify it says the art of podcasting with rogan and his new multi-year spotify partnership um they basically go over the same deals and they kind of give a bit of an interview right so let's see um You've released more than 2,200 episodes of JRE and have a signature interview style, especially in length of the conversations. Talk a bit about how your style has evolved. <laughs> you know, it's really funny that people are so, are so like miffed about this idea of like the length of the conversation. There's still, there's still fucking podcasts out there that exist where people like try not to go over an hour. I've never understood this. I don't know about you guys, but if there's a streamer or if there's a person that I like, I can listen to you the whole entire day. If you're streaming for 24 hours, I will, I will tune in for six hours, then I'll pop out, then I'll keep tuning in later. It doesn't really matter, really, like how long your show is. If I like the person and I like what they're speaking about, I'm going to listen to it. But still, the mainstream media have this weird, broken idea about like, you know, like, they have a strange brain when it comes to 
when it comes to flipping <laughs> when it comes to the media like oh the length of the conversations is so long uh, come on man come on anyway um he says here i think podcasting is an art form and it definitely what he says here it definitely sucked at when i first started it i was curious oh yeah big up keith thompson joe has eight different revenue streams and all he does is hang out with his friends and go hunting yeah exactly 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 yo big up mm big up my girl mm why couldn't I have had twins with a successful comic like this? Damn, I'm a moron. <laughs> we have to do a no comment on that one, isn't it? For now, to keep it peace. But that's so true, <laughs> man. Yo, Rogan's wife definitely lucked out, isn't it? Like, no wonder she doesn't talk. If I was Rogan's wife, I also wouldn't talk. You know that. If I was Rogan's wife, I also wouldn't say a fucking word. Like, what's the point? Don't you find it interesting though, right? Rogan's wife is actually filthy rich, right? Filthy rich. Doesn't say a word. Doesn't even have a public Instagram. Brendan's missus, you know, they kind of pretend like they're rich. And she's all up in the fucking, you know. Don't you? <laughs> like, that, that's how it always is, isn't it, right? The, the ones that actually do have it just kind of, you know do their thing the ones that don't are all out here fucking you know sitting in the fucking lambo truck and tilting their head to the side so you can see the badge and shit it's like come on bro come on anyway anyway big up big up big up big up um let's um quickly go over this question so let me start again um you've released more than 2200 episodes of jre and a signature interview style especially the length of the conversations talk a little bit about how your style has evolved over the years i think podcasting is an art form and i definitely sucked at it when i first started i was curious but i didn't understand how to make conversations flow i did not know when to shut up and listen and i didn't know how to make someone comfortable so that you can get the most out of their perspective i learned how to assist the conversations flow instead of waiting for my turn to talk i learned how to be fully locked in with the other person saying I've always wondered, I've always wondered why this isn't something most of his friends follow. Most of Rogan's friends within that GRE verse who've got their own pods, I think of Burr, I think of Brendan being big ones that kind of jump out to me. I think of Andrew Schultz. They never let their, their guests, they never shut the fuck up. That's the thing. Rogan's, one of the things he was kind of known for when he first started was being an excellent interviewer, an excellent conversation, especially long form. He, he let people, he let, he let, he let, he let there be space for silence. He let people to talk. He let people to kind of, you know, um, you know, think, mull over questions, maybe go down, meander a little bit and then come back to the main point. Now, obviously he's kind of changed. He's kind of gotten a bit, you know, in his old age, he kind of does seem to, um, he does seem to kind of dictate where the conversations goes. I think a good example is Bobby Lee episode. Bobby Lee was trying to be silly and Rogan just wasn't having it. He was always trying to like throw at him fucking COVID talking all this sort of nonsense. But one thing Rogan did do really well in the beginning was he was really good at just being quiet, allowing people to actually have a speak, having, having had their say. And I wonder why a lot of his friends didn't copy that. They just kind of copied obviously the pod, but they do this thing where they just wait for their turn to speak. They're not actually listening. And I think Rogan does really a good job of listening to the person, even though he does, again, cannibalize um, conversations nowadays, um, maybe because he just feels like, he, maybe because nowadays it's less about him being old and more so about him, state, his stature. No, he's bigger in stature, if that makes sense. So maybe nowadays he doesn't need to listen to you because he's fucking Joe Rogan. So maybe people are coming to listen to Rogan, not because of the guest, but because of him now. So maybe he doesn't feel like, you know, he's, you know, he's, I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, a lot of help, a lot of what, a lot of, um, sorry, a lot of what helps is I don't do it for many hours and learn. To, no, a lot of, sorry, let me go again. Jesus Christ. A lot of what helps is that I've done it for so many hours. I learned how to do it better over with trial and error, but also that I only have people on the show that I'm generally interested in talking to. I never do a podcast just because of a person is popular. I'm always from a place of, I think I would be cool if I spoke to this person. I've also learned so much, not just from all the episodes themselves, but also from the audio books I've listened to, the articles, the books I've learned. I've read, sorry, the documentaries I've watched and for, for the, even the show, I've always feel like in starting a podcast, 
podcast, I stumbled into fantastic accidental education just by being interested in talking to people and being fortunate enough to want people to listen to them. And that, I think, is at the heart of his success. Just being fucking curious. Just being curious. I love it. Any guess that changed the way you think about life? Too many to name. I've been blown away by countless times by the way the brilliant people interf interf um, interface with the world and how it shapes the way that they describe life. Core cool conversations are the kind of mental nourishment. And if ever around interesting people, you don't get to have conversations with people who are exceptional. And I think it's almost a kind of a social starvation. I think why so many people like to listen to podcasts is because you can fly on the wall and experience the inner workings of a mind of somebody who may be different than anyone you would ever normally encounter in your life. I also think that from listening to these cool conversations, it encourages people to have in similar conversations with their friends. And it just generally makes life more interesting okay this is a bit now he's fucking now he's talking out of his ass right <laughs> he's going on as if like people are like what people are going to be inspired to talk about the comedy store <laughs> with their friends okay you need to relax you need to relax a little bit it's just a podcast <laughs> let's chill out okay let's chill out no one's fucking framing their conversations with their real friends about <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but if if I if I hear something funny in a podcast and I want to listen mention it to my my friends, I am too ashamed to say I heard it in a pod. I'll just make up and say, "Oh yeah, I heard, I found out." Oh, have you seen that thing? I'll never mention. Oh, I was listening to fucking Theo Vaughn and he said this. No, I'll just say I I read somewhere, I heard somewhere. This idea that people are like you know playing a fucking Rogan podcast in the middle of the dinner table while they eat. It's fucking crazy, man. Um, I'm so lucky to be friends with some of the most funniest people alive. And when the people who like Brandon Shaw, and when the people hear those episodes, it's hilarious to relief for them um, for the bullshit most people are going through in life. I think that the experience is extra special because nothing is planned out. There's no script of what we're going to talk about. And it's all just sort of happens in real time. It's an actual organic conversation with people enjoying themselves, which is something we can all relate to and something we can all do. These conversations have changed the way I think about life immeasurably and continue to do so. I feel extremely fortunate to be able to do it. And again, I don't think this humility from Rogan is fake. That's the thing I think about Rogan that's, that's I think, unique about him. He might be a bit of a unbearable cunt because of him being an unbearable cunt but i don't think it's ever to do with his humility i think he's actually a very level-headed and grounded guy for how much money he's worth and for the level of celebrity and stature and influence he has because honestly give this kind of power give this kind of money give this kind of clout to anyone else within his vortex anyone else within that jerry universe imagine you gave schultz 250 million imagine for a minute you gave andrew schultz 250 million imagine how unbearable he would be rogan is pretty level-headed and grounded for the money he's worth and the stature he has let's be fair to the guy i know he can be annoying but imagine you gave burt kreischer 250 million <laughs> just imagine Tell us about the Green Room playlist. Oh no. Rogan stole Brendan Schaub's idea. Remember Brendan Schaub had that Green Room Diaries? Rogan's doing Green Room playlist. Brendan's going to be pissed when he sees this. That was Brendan Schaub's idea. Green Room Diaries. He did this thing where every, every time he was performing at clubs, he'd write a little comedy set and then put it out. Wow. Rogan, how could you copy Brendan like that, man? Come on, Rogan come on papa man free papa free papa what kind of music would you listen to before you start the green room to be fair you know what's funny about this rogan has a worse taste in music i don't know who's gonna be listening to this show. this is gonna be super boomer music rogan has really horrible taste in music and he can't dance anyone that can't dance you should never listen to him when it comes to music never 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 listen to any anybody that can't even two-step or can't like bob to the beat don't listen to him when it comes to music in my personal opinion but hey what do i know the green room playlist is something we started when i realized it's more fun to turn the green room into a party i learned that from dave Chappelle. he would always come to the comedy store and bring a big bluetooth speaker and dave had dope, dope taste in music it changed the vibe of the room and it actually enhanced the conversations i copied that and started doing it everywhere i went and it made it way more fun 
when I set up at a comedy mothership, we installed a killer sound system in the green room. And whenever someone introduced them me to something cool, it makes it on the list. Oh, okay. So it's not his taste. Fair play. It's everybody else adding to the playlist. No problem. I take it back. I thought it was going to be Rogan's. If it's Rogan's playlist, I don't want to hear it. Because it's going to be fucking... It's going to be fucking Letter Kenny and shit, right? Is that... What's a band? It's going to be fucking Letter Kenny. It's going to be him still playing fucking Guns and Roses and shit. It's like, come on, bro. Come on. Come on now. Allow it. Um, I usually play it randomly. Sometimes I'll start with the last song on the list. Sometimes I'll just spin. <laughs> Look at him trying to... He's describing, he's describing shuffle play. Yo, trying to fucking mansplain shuffle play is fucking crazy, bro. Like, <laughs> I love Rogan. He's, he's mansplaining shuffle. I usually play it randomly. Sometimes I'll start at the last song. Later. Sometimes I'll just spin the scroll and let my finger land anywhere. Ooh. <laughs> I think the current list is over 15 hours of music. It's everything from Run the Jewels to Black Keys to Janis Joplin and Liz Fair. Yo, I'm sorry, but if I see a lineup, of a festival with Liz Fair, Janis Joplin, the Black Keys and Run The Jewels, I'm running. That is the most like, get me out of here, boomer lineup I've ever seen. That lineup screams hemp. You know what I mean? That screams hemp. That that lineup looks like seed oils. I'm not, I'm not involved. A lot of the songs are recommended by fellow comics and there's some gems in there. And I also picked some Spotify suggestions. <laughs> Ooh, nice plug there. Um, there's also kinds of music from the list from the country to hip hop to classic rock and Delta blues. I've got, whoops, see Daisy. Um, I've got the vibe. No, I love the vibe you get from shit hopping. <sighs> I love the vibe you get from shit hopping from Diane Wood. <laughs> <laughs> who's listening to Dyer Wood in 2024 fam Nina Simone fair play Wu-Tang Clan fair play Led Zeppelin fair play Diane Wood you might as well put like Santi Gold on there and shit like what is this it's just fun list of cool music I love if I had to pick one so also no no wonder innit aren't, Dan, aren't Diane Wood like super racist they like using the n-word innit Rogan's used nigger a few times so maybe that's why he likes them if I had to pick one song to get party started <laughs> It's Casey and Sunshine. I'm your boogie man. Oh, of course, man. Fucking hell. What the fuck? The best song I ever listened to. <laughs> okay. uh, Green Room Diaries. Look at look at Rogan's playlist. Look at Rogan's playlist. You, of course, you got Gary Clark Jr. Gary Clark Jr. is one of Rogan's favorite black people. Him and Brian Simpson. Gary, Rogan loves Brian Simpson and fucking. Um, Gary Clark Jr. He flipping loves them, innit? Those are his favorite blacks. Uh, Fleetwood Mac, the Black Keys, and RZA, or maybe RZA as well. RZA, Brian Simpson, and Gary Clark Jr. are three of Rogan's favorite blacks, and of course Dave Chappelle. He's got Blitz Trappin here, Blitz Trap, Blitz and Trapper. Sorry, uh, Midland. Oh, it's a Midland track here. Okay, fair play. Um, Rolling Stones, Revivalist, Vinnie Paz. Lenny Kravitz, of course. Wood Brothers, Zach Bryan. Fucking, honestly, burn my ears. Uh, more Zach Bryan. We've got Kanye West track here, Jail. Nice to see there, Kanye. We've got uh, Kanye, Jay-Z, Frank Ocean, No Trust in the Wild, Jelly Roll, Boo. Some decent tunes in there, decent tunes. Decent. So Doors, okay, fair play. There's some good stuff on there. <laughs> There's some fucking good stuff on there. But yeah, check out Green Room Diaries available on Spotify if you want to check that out. Available for listening pleasure. You can shuffle, listen to them or play it from the start, as Rogan says. But yeah, man, 250 million. He's up and he deserves every flipping penny of it. If anything, again, it's another reminder that the top podcast will keep getting all the big money and then the ones underneath will have to kind of fight for the scraps. But I do like this other approach that Spotify are doing. It's not exclusivity. We're going to sign you, of course, but then we're going to distribute it to other platforms. I love that kind of way of operating things. I think that's a far better way, especially if they're just going to like, you know, let's just focus on the ads and get money that way. It's just a shame that, you know, the way they're funding this is by firing a bunch of people. So all those hundreds and thousands of people that got fired at Spotify, <laughs> they got fired to give Rogan 250 million. 
<laughs> that's the really brutal side of it so if you lost your job just know that your salary went in part to pay Joe Rogan's minimum pay <laughs> minimum payment that he got from Spotify it's fucking brutal but that's the reality of life we live in now all those flipping podcast studios that got closed um locations that are now defunct they all got scrapped because Rogan needed his minimum guarantee you know and Rogan definitely doesn't play with his money Rogan looks like the kind of person that you know if you're not paying him he's not he's not there like he doesn't fuck around so when they said minimum he wanted it up front and he wanted it in cash no delays no flipping delays 